What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, we finally get to talk about Giant Sparrow's next game. You cannot imagine the smile on my face as I opened up Twitter, as I kept refreshing, because today was a light news day. So I refresh, and I refresh, and eventually I see Shinobi spreading what is a, uh, hey, here's all kind of early details on Giant Sparrow's next game. And uh, he took it directly from their website. They actually did an interview, I believe, with the New York Times today, and it's like, what? where was I the entire day. I actually go on Giant Sparrow's site an okay amount um, just because I love that studio. I've long talked about them with un primarily Unfinished Swan and What Remains of Edith Finch. I mean, those two games are, I believe, phenomenal. I believe they're some of the greatest games ever made. I, I truly, truly stand by that. And I've been waiting for so long. And to be honest with you, the one negative here, if you read the New York Times article, is that it sounds like it's still quite a while away. They talk about how the team is only three people, which I swear when they made What Remains of Edith Finch, it was a lot higher, like maybe in the 20s or so. That's still insanely small, but not three. So I don't know where those people went, but three people feels like that's still like early kind of development, right? You kind of want to build up, get a couple more people in. And they talk about that they're doing uh, six week sprints and making these prototypes to kind of come up with this game so it doesn't yet again as you read the article the game does sound like it's got like what it is like they know what this game is going to be but like I don't know does it sound like a game that's coming out next year probably not and it's been a long time I think it's been five years since what remains of Edith Finch maybe even longer than that so you know you're probably gonna have to wait seven eight nine years since their last game that part royally sucks but to honestly okay with the way the industry has been going the last two years, I got increasingly more scared that Giant Sparrow was just, even though those games were successful, especially for such a small team, those games did well in terms of sales. I'm sure they made a lot of money, probably is what allowed them to keep going without games, you know, the last couple of years. But, you know, I, I got scared. I got scared that maybe one day we would open up Twitter and see, in fact, when Shinobi's post popped up, I was 50-50 on, oh my God, is Giant Sparrow shutting down? So honestly, I know I keep spending so much time on it, but if you haven't played those games, uh, trust me, for once in your life, trust me that those games are absolutely worth experiencing at least once in your life. So this is a game about animals. Now, they kind of had already talked about that. If you went on their website at any point in the last, like, three, four years like I have, uh, they, they've said that. But what it basically sounds like now is, and in fact, the ending of the New York Times article, they talk about that this is going to be one of the weirder games that you've ever played. But it sounds like they're going to have some more, like, fantastical type, like, almost. Uh, not like mythological, but these kind of like larger than life type animals and then also animals that you know. And it's basically about biology. In fact, he says this game is trying to call out just how weird biology is. The intention is for players to feel a push and pull between themselves and the game world. Dallas pointed to a sequence in which players must try to get something stuck on a giraffe's head, which is also coaxing the animal to draw near and angle its head just so. So like it's, it, if you read the whole article, it does sound incredibly weird weird but it's about animals it's about animals and how they kind of react to each other how they react to the world and I think somewhere in there they talked about short stories so it might be broken up almost into like chapters where like chapter two you play as the giraffe or you play as the human observing the giraffe and maybe there's some mini games in there where you become the giraffe I mean look they've done things like this at least for me I think to what remains of Edith Finch and that game was just a collection of creativity right like for every family member where they told that story you were doing all sorts of different stuff you were doing like this uh the fairy tale type like reading a book right and you were in that book you were literally playing out like Halloween with like comic strips right you were playing as a snake at some point like the game was just so clever and creative and again I think I think that's the better of the two but I, I feel like we've already kind of gotten hints where like they like to at least the heads of the studio because everybody else is gone they like to jump around right they like they like to kind of put you in shoes of, of just different things and get weird like uh Unfinished Swan is not necessarily the most weird game, but What Remains of Edith Finch is. Like, they are kind of weird. So, like, hearing that this game is going to be weird, that makes me very happy. And, you know, the tweet itself that kind of got me excited. So, you play as a field biologist studying both mundane and fantastical urban wildlife. And then they say, like, it's inspired by Eco, Spirited Away. They talk about Walt Disney. And the Walt Disney one was kind of like, you know, this is not 
the most uh, highly polished, like uh, 300, 400 million dollar game, but it's got something like cutting edge to it, right? And it, it's, I guess, maybe hard to describe, and hopefully I'm doing an okay job at it, but I kind of get it, right? Where it's like, it's going to be something that maybe pushes and, and kind of comes from this creative corner of the world, uh, but it, it doesn't require, you know what I mean? It doesn't require 400 million dollars to do. It's more of like a smaller uh, come from behind story, indie type story. So I don't know. I, I am very excited. We still haven't seen anything. And now they did say uh, on their blog thing, on their actual website, that when they are ready to announce the game, they're going to do it on Twitter. I've always wondered about like the game awards and stuff. I mean, like those shows, you think about Gamescom, Summer Game Fest, like it can cost a couple hundred thousand dollars to show the game. Something tells me they don't have like five hundred thousand dollars to just drop to do a reveal trailer at a Jeff Keighley show. So yeah, Twitter probably makes sense. I think this is going to be a game that much like the other two is carried through just creativity, just being unbelievably good, carried through word of mouth. Like that's, you know, what remains of Edith Finch. I specifically, I was like around for that a little bit more than I don't even think I was around for Unfinished Swan on YouTube, at least. Right. I think that's how this game is going to grow an audience just like the past game. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. I know it's pr it's a small game and it probably doesn't garner like a lot of attention, at least right now. But I, I promise you, I mean, this is a game that's right up my alley and something I, I genuinely want to cover. So you'll be seeing anytime the something breaks on this game, I'll be covering it one way or another on one channel or another. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on. I hope to see you all on the next one.